Just finished watching Halo episode number three, and I am still continuously impressed by what I have been seeing so far. Um, you know, when the show was first coming out, a lot of people were really negative on it. And they said, well, this isn't the chief that we know and love. I have argued, not just in my review of this series, but just as a fan of Halo as a whole, sometimes the source material is a little rough to work with, particularly in the video game front. Um, I think some of the writing hasn't been the best. I think the books do a much better job of kind of fleshing out the universe and showing you how all the pieces and all of the players and how kind of everything comes together. But look no further than Halo Infinite to see just how bad writing can be in these games. Yes, we're playing a first person shooter and having a lot of fun and the gameplay is phenomenal, but the story elements behind it, some of the things the characters say, some of their motivations seem kind of lackluster. So to me, the creators of the show had a very difficult task on their hand because if it was just more of the game, probably wouldn't be that interesting to any audience, whether it was a super fan like myself or somebody who just doesn't know anything about it and just like, oh, what is Halo? I want to check this out. They did an interesting thing. They made John much more human. And I have said before, the best scene of any Halo game ever was the end of Halo 4 when John and Lasky are talking on the deck after Cortana is seemingly lost after the battle with the Didact. And we get to see the most human John we have ever seen. It's only for a brief moment in that cutscene. Unfortunately, when Halo 5 Guardians comes out, 343 did not want to double down on that and they moved off in a totally different direction. In the books, John is definitely much more talkative to himself. He's working through things. He's thinking about things. He's reflecting on the battlefield and his fellow Spartans and that sort of thing. We don't really get to see that in the game. They take it to a whole different level with the television show by removing this emotional pellet, this uh, device that you know kind of suppresses his emotions. And in removing that and injecting him with Cortana, who is basically a spy um they're going to try to use him to as they always do because you know he's a soldier they're always using him unfortunately but to use him to uncover the truth of this artifact and to use him to as we now know there may be a, yet another artifact that they're going off to find and in those scenes leading up to him kind of realizing that he's not uh when he takes the emotional chip out and he's walking around Reach and he's listening to music and he's looking at the dog and he's living and he's, he's not smiling, but he's definitely much more engaged in the universe. Uh, very, very cool scene to me. I was very, very interested in that to see how one of the toughest fighting elite soldiers in the world would react to hearing a really nice concert on like a nice evening and to see friends laughing and playing and people holding hands and living life as normal. Um, a very stark contrast to what you see day to day in terms of, you know, when he was talking about losing a, a fellow Spartan on a mission and he goes, I feel nothing. I remember it, but I feel nothing. Seemingly okay with that, of course. The chip is doing its job or the pellet, whatever, uh, seemingly doing its job. But I love that we are getting to see a much more human side of him. Um, and I really like that. He's kind of gone rogue again in a sense and I, I feel like this is what the promise of Halo 5 Guardians should have been <laughs> I feel like we should have had this more of this more of this you are truly going AWOL you are truly just being on your own and being your own person and you're kind of not just exploring what it's like to be a super soldier and fighting against these insane enemies but it's that human element that's injected and I'm absolutely fascinated by it. Um, does it follow the canon of what is traditional Halo? No. And as I've said in other videos, I'm not going to sit here and discuss every single thing that's like, well, actually, <laughs> it doesn't matter. This was intended to be its own universe and I think it does a phenomenal job. If anything, it enhances my love for the universe and for the character. Some really cool things that I absolutely adored in this episode by far, uh, seeing a little bit more of McKee and seeing her story and how she's evolving as the chosen one. We saw just a snippet, I mean like one second of a hunter. <laughs> um, 
as you know, the hunters aren't just the big monsters are actually conform, you know, they're actually made of all these little tiny worms, which we did see in spades as, as she took over the UNSC ship. Um, but it was so cool to see just a snippet of it. I hope there's more. I know one of the criticisms of this show, and I do have to agree, is they're only showing elites. I've heard them mention grunts specifically. We haven't seen them yet. There's definitely a lot of stuff in this game that I feel would kind of be relegated to like a grunt status, but only elites are the ones that are really like fully rendered in the game and they move in the show, you know, <laughs> except for except for that little snippet of the hunter there. Saw a little bit of his leg and I was like, oh, oh, so maybe, maybe there's a big battle coming up at some point. And, you know, speaking of battles, um, this was yet another dialogue, dialogue intensive low on action episode. Yes, we did get to see the brutal hostile takeover of the UNSC ship. But for the most part, a lot of this was just talking and exploring that human element. And I'm totally fine with that. I think if this show is going to succeed and I'm still going out, I'm probably one of the few fans that at this point is saying I still absolutely love this show. Um, if the show is going to succeed, it needs to find its own path. And I think it is. I think it's doing its own thing. I think it's really exploring that element. And I love that. So that's really, really cool. Um, lastly, with Cortana herself and her looks, it doesn't bother me that she's not made of, you know, the traditional holographic blue hard light that we're used to seeing in the game. Uh, as we know, Cortana has gone through major, major changes. She was uh, purple for a while, if you remember. And, uh, Got some major overhauls as the years went on. Graphically, they made her more sexualized and they kind of toned back on that a little bit. Turned into Homicidal Maniac at the end and sort of an off-screen redemption in Halo Infinite. So she has definitely never been... Uh, her model has changed radically in her personality. If you were like, who is Cortana? You know, we're talking about the rampancy Cortana. We're talking about the really gimmicky Cortana from Halo Combat Evolved. Or we're talking about the redemptive Cortana at the end of Halo Infinite. Um, I like this iteration of Cortana. I like that she is kind of playing both sides right now. I mean, she's smart enough clearly to know. I mean, she's like the walking computer, right? She's smart enough to know that eventually John's probably going to figure out that, you know, she's up to no good. And I suspect, as with everything, we're going to get that human uh, element injected into the show. And I think maybe you're going to have to see her make a choice. She's going to have to be loyal to John or she's going to have to be loyal to Halsey and the UNSC. And I feel like the show is doing a really good job of building up these key moments in characters' lives that really make an impact. Quan is a great example. I, I know she's been kind of kicked off to like the B plot right now, still very obsessed with uh, this redemptive story of breaking free of the evil UNSC and restoring her planet to, I don't even say previous glory. It didn't look all that great in episode one before the elite decided to come by and pretty much kill everybody. Um, but she's really hell bent on kind of bringing back everything and she's looped Soren into this Soren you know kind of the cold hard calculated ex-Spartan so it'll be interesting to see if he ends up siding with her I have a feeling if he wanted to get involved he could probably turn the tide of just about any war being a former Spartan so really 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 good stuff um the last thing I wanted to mention in this episode specifically that we didn't really see a lot in the last episode we did in the first one, but the second one, uh, not as much. Um, there were a lot of scenes where John was walking around in his power armor, particularly at the end in his Mjolnir suit. And the way that they make him so overwhelmingly tall and the way that the sound effects hit when he's like, gush, gush, gush. really, really cool stuff, man. Um, I loved it. I'm so excited that this series exists. And I'm so happy to be just a super fan and maybe filling in the gaps with my own experiences of and thoughts and what I know of the extended universe and filling in some of the gaps. But um, it's great. It's, it's so much fun. I, I can't wait to watch the next episode. And I know I'm, I'm, I know I'm way on the outlier here of saying that as a, a fan, I love this stuff. But I really do love this stuff. And I, I can't wait to see where the Halo show goes next. 
Uh, leave your thoughts below in the comments. Let me know what you thought about episode three. Is it turning the tide? Is this turning the tide for you? You're starting to come around and see it my way? Or is the, uh, the, the blind hate because it's the cool thing to do? Is that consumes you? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks again for watching. Take care of yourselves. And until next time, I will see you guys on the other side.